All right, so I know you guys have been waiting for this one. The day has finally come. Volvo electric power steering going in my Trans Am. So where we last left off on the Trans Am project, we got the engine all wired up. Pretty much like 90% of the wiring under the hood is done. I think all I really need to do is run some wires to the AC compressor, the cooling fans, and today the electric power steering. But the thing actually has power now going to the engine, going to the accessories inside the car, and she actually cranks over. So little by little, each one of these videos, we're getting closer to getting this thing started and uh, taking it out on a test drive. Now, before we get into the power steering conversion, if you are new to the channel, click the link at the top of the screen. That's gonna bring you to my Trans Am playlist. You could get all caught up and you'll know my exact plans for my build. Also, please feel free to go down to the comments, leave a like on the video, maybe leave a comment, tell me what you're working on. I feel like this content doesn't really reach as many people as it could, and a lot of you guys seem to enjoy it, so why not try to push this out, maybe get it to people who also share the same interests. So a few weeks ago, I took a trip up to Harry's You Pull It, their Hazleton location. So that's the largest of the three yards. And I just scoured the Volvo section until I came across one of these. Now this one in particular came out of a mid 2000s S40. However, you can also get it in what I believe is the S60 and the XC, the kind of the SUV. Um, if anybody definitively knows the year range and the models of Volvo you could get this thing out of, please leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to link you and uh, pin that comment so everybody else could see that info. Because people said that it came in S60s online, but the S60s I came across, they just had a regular uh, hydraulic pump as well as the S80s had a regular hydraulic pump. So I don't know if it's a year range thing or what, uh, but the S40 I came across just happened to have it. I paid 45 bucks out the door, managed to get it with all the pigtails, the bracket. And you can get this in a couple of different variations. This is kind of the all-in-one model where the reservoir is built into the pump. You can see it's a little bit tall, but there also is one where you could get it with an auxiliary reservoir. It's a little tiny square reservoir you can mount somewhere else with the uh, hose going down to it. That'll make this whole assembly a little bit shorter. As for mounting it in the car, unfortunately there aren't too many places to fit it. Due to the size of the thing and because it's so tall, you can really only put it in three spots on this car, um, at least like in the engine bay, aside from like putting it somewhere in the cabin. Um, we're looking at either a passenger side fender, pretty much same spot where Volvo put it, driver side fender or somewhere in front of the radiator. Now, initially I wanted to put it somewhere in front of the radiator. It kind of makes sense, the thing is tall. You could fit it there. You can have the cap kind of poke through where the uh, valance is gonna be reinstalled between the headlights. It'll be hidden, you can access the fluid. It kind of makes sense. Unfortunately, being I am planning on turboing this car, I guess that's not really a downside. However, for this install, it's a downside. Um, once I put an intercooler and piping in there, it's gonna be right in the way of all that stuff. So kind of in front of the radiator is a no-go. I have decided to mount it on the passenger side of the car, pretty much in the same spot where Volvo put it. Kind of doesn't make sense on this car, being the steering box is on the driver's side. However, sit back, relax. Once again, enjoy the music. I'm going to pull the passenger fender off, mount this thing up, get all the lines made, and then I'll explain myself when I'm done.
All right, so the fabrication portion of this project is pretty much done. I still have to make some lines for it, but I don't think that's gonna be too difficult. Next up, I am gonna run the power wires. So I have a um, eight gauge red wire I'm gonna run for the power, eight gauge black for the ground. Probably just gonna ground it right to this bolt here. And I am gonna put an 80 amp circuit breaker in line with the power. For the turn on wire, I'm just gonna run the, what color is this? Blue, blue stripe, gray, over to the driver's side of the car and plug it into my 12 volt uh, key on kind of bus bar that I set up and that's gonna be it for the power for the hoses I'm actually gonna utilize the factory power steering cooler. That's just like one big loop on the return side I'm just gonna unbend it send it to this side of the car and then just make the connection to this Which is the rubber hose and some clamps for the pressure side We're gonna need something a little more substantial. So I am gonna be using the factory Volvo high pressure hose that's gonna screw into the pump the other end I'm gonna flare and I'm gonna run a 3-8 steel uh, tube over to the driver's side of the car and connect that to the steering box. And that's gonna be it. We don't have to make any special hoses, no special orders or like a whole bunch of AN fittings that are gonna drive the price up. So this should work pretty good. Now, um, you're probably wondering why did I mount this on the passenger side of the car when the driver's side has the steering box and I wouldn't have to make super long hoses. Main reason, the way this is mounted, I have it so the electro connector is on the outside instead of inside the engine bay, which makes me, which allows me to mount this up high enough where it's not gonna be hanging below the fender and this connector can actually click clear and I have access to it. The way the pump is orientated, if I did that on the driver's side and this was flipped around, it would put the fittings for the hoses inside the wheel well and then I have to deal with kind of moving them and bending them so they don't rub on the wheel. I didn't wanna to have to deal with that. But uh, yeah, it's all mounted up. I used all the factory Volvo bracketry, just kind of snipped it, rebent it, re-welded it so it fits the third gen. Uses all the factory Volvo isolators so it's not gonna have any like weird vibration going through the car. And uh, yeah, now we're ready to wire it up and get the hoses made.
Uh, I just broke the power steering pump. So you can see up there, the standoff where the fitting screws in completely snapped off of this stupid thing. And there it is. Don't know why that happened. I was putting it in with a box wrench. Hardly, it was barely getting snug. And then I just felt a little crunch and then um, gave it a little tiny bit more and then that's what happened. So, um, yeah, this pump is pretty much trash now. So I guess I'm just gonna have to cave and spend the hundred something dollars on eBay anyway, unless I make another trip to a junkyard. However, let's, at least I want to see if this stupid thing works. So we're all wired up. I have the power wires going to the uh, power distribution block over there, grounded it right to the body there. The hard line, I used the Volvo power steering line and I just flared one end, ran a hard line to the steering box. Um, the original Volvo end was supposed to be going into the pump. And then same thing on the box, I ended up using a fourth gen Camaro hose and I just cut it so I had the fitting here. And then I just made my own flare, right? The hard line down, it goes underneath the radiator here. You can see I bent the cooler back and made the return. Everything came out really nice. Like the, the bending came out really nice. I thought it was home free. And then the, uh, the stupid pump breaks. But let's go ahead and see if this thing's gonna turn on. Yes, I did also run the wire from the uh, three pin connector here over to the block over there. So it does have ignition power once the battery's hooked up. I should probably move this stuff at the very least. And let me just flick the breaker on for the battery. And if I wire this correctly, key on, the pump should wind up. Oh yeah. All right, she squared a little bit, but yeah, that thing wound right up. And uh, I mean, at least the wiring and everything else is good. We just have no way of getting the fluid to the power steering box. I'm gonna put the mic right over here so you can kind of maybe hear how loud it is. I'll wind it up one more time. Key on. <laughs> Wow. Alright, so that is not the way I wanted this video to end. However, um, with the exception of me breaking the pump, it's technically finished. All I gotta do is pop the fender on. I got all the fabrication done. Um, mounted up great. It obviously works. Everything's wired correctly. I got the circuit breaker in there and all the lines are done. Really all I need to do is make that connection to the new pump once I replace it and then just tie up the hard line that I made that goes from the pump to the power steering box. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna link everything that I used in this video in my Amazon store. So just click the link below the video. Um, if you wanna give me a follow over there, that would be great. And I'm gonna just continue from here on out, link any parts that I use that I get from Amazon in my store. I have different categories. So I have a Tahoe uh, folder, I have a Trans Am folder. Um, tools, parts, shop supplies, stuff like that. All the stuff used in my videos that I get through Amazon can be found in that store at the link below. Uh, from here on out, I'm just gonna go on eBay, try to find a pump for cheap. Luckily, I don't need the brackets or the pigtails, so I could probably save some money there. I'll throw the fender on, and um, next video, we'll get this thing ready and we're gonna start it up.